In this video, I'm going to be showing you three different ways to find profitable products to sell on Amazon. And then after we do all that, I'm going to go ahead and break down what I think is the best way out of those three for you to get started no matter where you're at on Amazon right now. But if you guys are brand new to the channel, my name is Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. Super excited to get into the fundamentals of product sourcing with you guys. It is the baseline of any Amazon business. Nothing else matters until you know how to find great profitable products. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. But before we do that, if you guys want even more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon, Amazon. Link directly beneath me is going to be our completely free Amazon seller Discord community. There's over 50,000 Amazon sellers in there. There's a ton of free information. Would love to see in there. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. So like I said, we're going to go ahead and get into the nitty gritty here on three different ways to source products for your business. So the first one here, I've gone ahead and pulled up Amazon and we really just want to get a starting point, right? And this is going to be probably one of my favorite methods, especially if you are a beginner Amazon seller, because we're looking for products like this one, right? So we're looking for a product like this soccer ball, right? We can buy it for $18 over here on this website, and then we can sell it on Amazon for about $44. And that's going to make us about $11 profit every single time we do that. And so our goal is to find more items just like that one, right? Name brand, the brand not on it. There's nothing super crazy going on to the listing. And it's also, you know, pretty stable, right? So if we check out the charts function on seller app there, we can see that the price over time is super, super flat. So it's pretty consistent, pretty reasonable to expect that over time. So we want to find way more products just like this one, right? So to do that, you want to go ahead and just pull up Amazon and doing reverse sourcing is one of the best ways to find products. And based on this item right here, if you guys at home have no profitable items in mind that you want to start as a starting point, all you need is one good item. You can start with this exact product here. I've done a ton of other videos on my channel showing profitable products. So you can start from one of those as well. But once you do that, you're just going to go ahead and start clicking on the sellers on this listing. So I want to go ahead and check out this guy here. He's an FBA seller. So he's doing what we want to do where we ship it directly to Amazon's warehouse. They take care of the rest of the work for us, shipping out to the customer, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and see. They got about hundred feedback. So it's not a massive seller, but they're not small either. When we do that using seller, we can get a very detailed view of everything that's going on with their storefront, right? So we can see the brands they're selling. So a lot of Herbalife, which is interesting. A lot of times you might want to like stay away from some of the MLM brands, that kind of stuff. But it seems like they're having some success with it. Looks like they've also got some Nike products. And then they've got this other Bergama Turkish cotton brand. Never, I've never heard of that. So the main thing we're trying to learn with this method is what brands can I sell as an Amazon seller? What products within those brands are good? And you know, a lot of times it's gonna open your eyes. So I've, like, I've never heard of this brand before. I've been doing this for five years, sold millions of dollars on Amazon. And now I might've learned a new brand that I might, might wanna look into, right? So as we're scrolling down this list here, I'm looking for products that I think I can buy for this max cost option. So in this case, this Herbalife stuff, I would imagine they're buying this. This is kind of like an MLM, kind of a, a common like scam kind of business here. So I would imagine that they're probably buying these like from a distributor. Or they are joined the MLM so they can sell it on Amazon or whatever it is. But let's go ahead and, and skip past those and see if we can find something a little more legit. So we've got these soccer balls. So very similar to that first product. If we can find that for about the same price as the other one, we'd be in the money. So something I like to do is hit the Google button and then it'll go ahead and search that product for me. So it just grabs the title, right? So I might even just add like soccer ball just to be extra safe with it. And then maybe even like blue and white. And we can see if this product is for sale anywhere for $18. So it seems like doing a quick check here. I see a lot of them listed at like 32 bucks. Amazon was at like 45. Nike has them for like 23, 32. Yeah. So probably a little bit too expensive, but having all this here all in one place saves you a ton of effort and we can really start, you know, digging deeper and, and finding something that's actually going to be good. So right now it's back to school season. So backpacks could be good. Why don't we go ahead and, and check this one out a little bit. So this elemental backpack, I might even just make it a little bit simpler. So elemental backpack. Let's try that and see if we get anything. So we've got the air logo on the back. So that could be it right there. I need to buy it for $32 to be profitable on this listing. And right there it's for $35. So that's interesting. And really I'm looking for that like Nike air logo, right? So kids elemental, I think the title even had like a, a Y. I would assume that's for youth. So this could be a profitable product here. So let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. I've never heard of this store before either. So we might want to do a little bit of research on that if this does end up being legit, but I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So we can see again, the sales rank is massively dipping here because we are in back to school season. So as that green line gets closer and closer to the bottom, it's getting closer to the fastest selling item in clothing and shoes. Makes sense. Everybody's going back to school right now. So backpacks are, are pretty popular. So if we can sell this item for $65, seems like plenty of people are having success on it for $65 up there. A lot of those sales are at like 60, something like that. But on an item like this, it's selling super, super fast with back to school season. I bet we could sell it for 65, no problem. And so on this, if we paid 35 bucks, we'd be making 25% ROI 
ROI. So we're pretty close to a profitable item here. Another thing we can do is check for coupon codes. So we can see this chic 10 or whatever it is. So I went ahead and tested that out real quick. Seems like the code's not working for whatever reason. But a lot of times with these products, if you see a, an item that is at least super close to profitable somewhere, um, always do the extra digging for a coupon code or you know anything you can do to get extra margin in your business, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and try searching for this again. Let's see if we can just find something. So I like the Google Shopping tab as well. We can get a really good idea of everywhere that we might be able to buy this product from. The other side of this equation might be that, you know, all the other resellers bought out this backpack and the prices are going up because of that. That's another thing you, you do have to think about sometimes. So yeah, I'm not seeing it too much there. So let's go ahead and keep on going down the list here. So more Herbalife stuff. I'm honestly really curious about this Turkish cotton brand of some kind. So it says they have seven products. So they must just have a bunch of variations of this. I wonder if this is there. Yeah. So this must be their private label. So the other side of selling on Amazon, right, is creating your own product. You have to make the listings and run ads to it. And, you know, they wrote all this and, and as arbitrage sellers, we don't have to do any of that. We can just piggyback off of existing listings that people already want to buy. If you want to go and create a private label, eventually it's, I think it's a great idea, but if you guys are a beginner on Amazon, do not start with private label. I've heard a lot of horror stories and you never know if your product is going to be a good idea, if it's going to be marketed well, and it just makes sense. As you grow as a business owner, you're going to make less mistakes. So you might as well make it in a cheaper business like doing arbitrage. So I want to go ahead and check out a different storefront. They were selling like a lot of like Herbalife and like some Nike stuff. So yeah, th that kind of stuff can be good, but just not seeing anything super promising there. So let's see what else we can find. So we got this mesh backpack we need to find it for 28 bucks. That's like a pinkish backpack kind of thing. So 35 bucks there, we need it for 28. So we'll go to shopping. And again, we're, we're really just looking to see if there's anyone selling this that might potentially offer a coupon on it. So I'm not seeing much going on there. I also want to just add ink for that, see if we can make it a little bit more niche down. So there's 35 champs has it for 37. I also don't, I think you're kind of crazy if you're using this backpack for your, your daily use, it's like mesh, it's like see-through. Could be like school policy or something like that, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> let me know if you would use a, a mesh backpack like that. So $37. So yeah, if we can find a coupon code, maybe we get 15, $20 off 120 is interesting. So $20 off of 120, we can see if that would make us profitable. So we can open the Amazon listing. $20 off of 120 works out to be about six 16, 17% off somewhere around there. So we'll just call it 16. So we're paying 37 and then we're getting 16% off. So I'm going to do times 0.84. We're going to end up paying about $31 for that product uh, over here. It looks like, wow, there's a lot of new sellers hopping on this as well. Yeah. And the sales rank is dipping. In my opinion, I bet this price will go back up right now. It seems like the price has maybe dropped a little bit. It wouldn't be unreasonable to make some sales on this item at 65 bucks where it jumps up there because the, the new seller count has also started to level out a little bit. So with back to school with tons of demand on this product, I wouldn't be shocked to see this come back to profitability and this would be a pretty decent lead. Let's see if it goes back to 60 bucks. You're still making $12 a unit. So this might be something I would take a gamble on. It's not the biggest home run because we are hoping that the price goes back up, but we're just now starting back to school season. The prices should be kind of skyrocketing up before too long here. So I would probably buy a little bit of that product myself just because it's a super high volume product and we're starting to see the new sellers kind of level out a little bit. So I, I think I might pull the trigger on that. I'd probably buy anywhere from, you know, 10 to 20 of those backpacks just to get a really safe bet on there. If you want to be a, you know, kind of gamble on it, you could buy probably hundreds and they would sell. It's just whether or not the price comes back up for you. So let me see if we can find another quick winning product here. And then we'll go ahead and talk about the next product sourcing method. So here we got like this training ball. Again, I don't know much about these, these soccer balls here, so might as well punch it in there. So it seems like the same ball there at Hibbit for 20 bucks. Just confirm. Yeah, the, the picture looks all the same. So now we want to check and see if there's a coupon, like if there's like a 25% code or anything like that. So nothing says 25 up there. It could be a 25% code. Buy in line and pick up today. Okay, so that that's at least an option, right? So if we went ahead and pay and pick up in store, yeah, you'd be able to do that. So yeah, on this item, like if you were able to pay and pick up in store here, I think it's out of stock for me for pickup at least that it was in stock here for, for shipping to home, but that would be a decent item. I think just kind of eyeballing it. If we need it for 15 bucks, we would be paying 15 bucks for it. You can go pick it up, but you know, that's another like closer item. Let's see if we can find one more winner. So there's that soccer ball that we came from. That's definitely a winning product. Let's see these shorts here, the NSW flow shorts, let's see woven flow shorts because a lot of times there's also going to be some sales on these items. So let's see, sportswear, woven flow. That stands for Nike sportswear is NSW. So I think it's the same product here, woven flow. We can also check like the pockets and stuff. I like to check the back pocket. So there's like the back pocket on shorts is kind of unique too. So we should have a good idea if that's the same product or not. Based on looking at the pockets, I would say it seems to be the same product. Could be a little bit different. Woven flow shorts, woven flow shorts. Yeah, I really think this is the same here. So the XL over here are 25 bucks with a 
20% code. We need to buy them for like 19, so we can do 25. There's a 20% off code, so times 0.80. And let's see, so we're looking at $6 profit almost, 28% ROI. So in clothing, I like to be a little bit pickier with my actual sizing here. Now, other thing you can do to maybe find a size that would be profitable as I go to variations down here on Keepa. This is a $20 a month tool. Selleramp is our product research tool. This is also $20 a month. So both these are super affordable for you guys. So let's go ahead and filter by like highest price. And then based on this, I like to figure out like what's the least that I would want to sell these items for to be really profitable. So for me, that's like 42 bucks probably make that 37% ROI. So anything less than $42, I don't, need to, I don't need to worry about checking at all. So I also want to see what other colors we have. So we got those are sold out. Okay, so it seems like we might just have the black and white here, which is fine. Usually it's the fastest sellers. So I'm also gonna show you another trick here. If you just type black into color, a lot of times it'll filter out like the best color. Let's see. So I guess for whatever reason, they call it white on this listing. You'll notice a lot of weird stuff with Amazon listings with them calling like, you know, the wrong products, the wrong color, all that good stuff. So let's see. So we've got the large there. And really I'm just looking at the pictures down here so I can confirm that it could be the same item. There's another large potentially. That's interesting. Let's see. So. And then I think we're above 42 or we're below $42 after that, which is our cutoff point to actually be profitable. So let's see these flex shorts. The tie in the front is also the same, which makes me feel a little bit more comfortable calling these the same item. So these are the size large, I believe. Yeah, large right there. Selling for 47 bucks. So we're buying them for 25 with a 20% coupon. So there you go. That's a $12 profit, 62% ROI. And I bet this is also a faster seller on the listing. So if we grab the ASIN, I'd like to paste it down into variations. So it's only got a couple ratings boost there. So it's not one of the faster selling products on this listing, but it might still be worth picking up, especially with that kind of ROI. And we also had another one that's that's black, white, large. So this is, I guess this is probably the same one we were just looking at that we started from. So yeah, that's 28% ROI. The buy box does jump up though. You see how it kind of hops up to like 43 bucks, 42 bucks. So we can also see like what's the average buy box over the last kind of 30 days here. Uh, average will be a 33% ROI. Average over the last 90 days is a 75% ROI. So I might also buy this product to be honest as well. I guess I wouldn't trust the average too much because this was way less sellers, but I don't hate this product. Last time, uh, another exercise I like to do is see what the price was last time there was this many sellers. So we're even on a decrease in sellers. So last time there was this many sellers, price was 40 bucks. And then the same thing happened last time the price was 40 bucks. So to me, 40 bucks is pretty consistent as a product here. So if we end up selling this for $40 as our worst case scenario, we're still making six bucks profit. So that's not too bad at all. So I might honestly pick up some of these as well. And I would assume that these are selling a lot faster. So if we grab that ASIN, go to variations here, paste it right there. And yeah, so it's it's a little bit slower recent or uh, on the long term, but I see a couple recent gains here. So it's probably gaining popularity on this listing. So I would honestly pick up based on the low review count, but increasing decently fast, they're probably test out another like 10 to 20, maybe 30 pairs of this just to see how it goes. So you guys can kind of get a little bit of insight onto how much I would buy there. But yeah, that's reverse sourcing for you guys. We do a ton more of this on the channel, but I want to go ahead and talk about the next sourcing method because I really want to get you guys a side by side here so you can see what the best method might be for your business. So I'm going to go ahead and close out some of these tabs here. And I was actually kind of already planning to show you guys some of these Nike sale products right now because we do have a sale plus a coupon code. That's some of my favorite things to check out. So every time you see a website, when there's a coupon code, you can stack on top of a sale on top of a clearance. And you know, even here, we might be able to get 12% cash back through Rakuten as well. Not always 100% of the time going to pay out for you, but it's a nice little bonus money when it does actually pay out. You know, getting 12% back on stuff you're already buying profitably would be pretty sweet. So the difference here is with manual sourcing, we're going straight to the source, right? And then we're manually looking through each product. And as the name implies, it's going to be a little bit more work typically because you're going to be finding products that are just absolute junk. But the upside to that is you're going to find the products that are, you can be kind of first to the party, right? So when we're reverse sourcing by nature of this source, sourcing method, we are kind of late to the party, right? We've already missed the initial sales bump that some of these guys are going to get by being first to the party. So as you do more and more reverse sourcing, you're going to learn, oh, that's a good brand for me to sell. Oh, I noticed not on sale over on this website. It doesn't just have to be clothing and shoes, that kind of stuff. We do a lot of vitamins, groceries, literally anything, right? So we're even going to talk about that with some of these sites here. So vitamins, you got some craft supplies, I'm super excited to talk about that as well. But let's do a little bit of manual sourcing here. So really what I'm looking for here is just products that might be about twice as expensive listed on Amazon after after my coupons, my credit card cash back, all that kind of stuff, right? So if I think I found a product like that, I'll go ahead and hop in here and then I'll highlight over it. Then I can right click and press SaaS search, or you can literally just press the seller ant button over there. And what that's going to do is search the product title for you on Amazon. So it saves you a bunch of time. If you're not using seller ant or using a different tool, you can't do this and you're wasting a ton of time. So make sure you guys are using seller ant. This is our product research tool. Let's see what we can find here. So, so it seems like we've got a listing here. It's 109k BSR. So it's not the fastest seller 
going on in the world. We definitely could find some winners. We got our running sneaker here, but it seems like it's the same model. It just has a different title. It seems like this is the same deal here as well. Men's sneaker, but the picture looks the same. This one looks the same. And the reason why you want to be doing manual sourcing, you know, loading it up using Selleramp, all that kind of stuff is because some of the best products that I have sold are just completely not called the right thing. The UPCs are wrong, anything like that. And some of the other methods, you'll miss out on some of the best products just by, you know, not digging the extra mile, finding all the possible listings for this product. So we're paying 76 bucks for this. So we're paying 76. We get a 20% off coupon as well. So really we're paying 60 bucks, which means now I want to figure out that same thing we did last time. What is my lowest price that I'm interested in selling this product? for, right? Is it, you know, about 110, probably 110, 108, somewhere in there. Really, I just want to make sure I'm making 35% ROI, especially with shoes where you're going to have extra returns and that kind of stuff. You want to make sure you're really strict with those profit criteria. So let's see, we've got, seems like a few of these items here listed above that 108 mark. We have this color here. It seems like it's like kind of reddish. So I'd be kind of surprised if we do have that. We do have like the all black though. So that's good to keep in mind. Some kind of specialty colors there. I've seen a lot of different ones that don't have a buy box, which is interesting. So I'm also going to go ahead and filter this by new price. So little bit different. So if you ever see a listing that's for sale and there's no button that says add to cart, usually Amazon thinks the price is too high. And that's why on some of these listings, there's no buy box, right? So I'll show you what I mean when I open one of these products. So we got obsidian, so dark gray, 94 bucks. So we're already below that threshold. So it doesn't even matter. We don't need to hunt anymore to find that product because we know that the product is not selling super well, right? And it's definitely not going to be selling at a price point that we're interested in. So it's kind of an interesting listing here. I see that there's no BSR. This would scare a lot of new sellers though. So I actually love of these listings if we can confirm in different ways that these products are actually selling so just to confirm that this listing is still you know being have some products purchased through it i want to go ahead and check out the ratings yeah see you see there's there's increased ratings going on here so even though the bsr is broken on this listing it is still selling so let's go ahead and filter by new price same thing again here goes we want to look for at least 108 dollars some of these are women's as well so this listing is kind of the wild west you'll notice this especially with like nike listings if you guys end up doing much of that that the listings can get pretty weird so i've seen a lot of women's there seems like i wonder if the men's are on a different listing or something like that the other thing we could do is check out because now we know that model number and this is where it really gets fun is when you're going down different rabbit holes and, and figuring things out just because you went down one so we can see okay so the women's version is the same price so if we can find one of these women's listings that is interesting in this black and white we would definitely be interested so i'm, I'm actually just going to filter a white so we can maybe get even closer there and i'm also just going to do i'm going to add that on purpose because we know that the men's were not expensive enough on amazon but the women's might be so low top all blacks Let's see are the all black ones on sale so this is the men's I don't think the women's listing has all black. So nothing interesting there. Let's check out this next one here. So there's literally multiple different listings for these products, right? So always dig through all of them. Again, seems like the prices are too low, 95 bucks. And then even one more. This is a pretty crazy one where there's tons of different listings for it. And this could also be a little bit different actually now that I'm looking at it. It's like a system, something like that. It's called something special. So this is not the same shoe, but the other ones definitely were. So let's go ahead and see if we can find something else here potentially. So I also like looking at some of the clothing on here. And especially if you guys can ever filter by, I don't think Nike has it, but if you ever see like a bestseller or popular or anything like that, typically that's going to filter down to the items that are actually selling the fastest on their website and therefore probably going to be fast sellers on Amazon. But I want to go ahead and dig a little bit deeper. So maybe let's let's see if we can find like some shorts or something like that, especially just looking for anything that's on sale and seems a little more basic, right? So as we're looking through here, I'm just looking for things that are already kind of on sale. So dry fit. So those are 23 bucks. Those are 34% off. Looks like a lot of them are, are gone. So those are the black and whites though. So I definitely want to check this one out search this up 27 bucks flex nine inch woven shorts that's what we're looking for so we're gonna open that up for sure the price looks pretty good if that's the right item too so i also want to check out this one dry fit knit hybrid i'm not sure if that's the listing we're on woven shorts check that one out it's a 10k bsr so let's go ahead and check it out so kind of a grayed out check there's our black and white i think yeah it looks looks black and white to me there's another black and white as well let's see we also want to see if we can figure out if this is the exact right thing so flex men's dry fit men's it's hard to tell if this is the same product this one looks more similar to me especially if we can see the side so it's got that little slit this listing has that little slit so to me this is the, probably the same product we're buying these for 27 and we get a 20 percent off code so we're doing 27 times 0.80 we're buying them for 21 and that means we want to sell them for probably 43 bucks or so even this listing right here was already at 40 bucks 42 
Recently, it's been up to like 46 and $43. So really, really close on this one. So we're gonna do the same thing. Let's see if any of these listings are expensive enough for us. So here's the double XL blacks, four XL, see regular larges, I think are the ones we're looking at. And then there's also a medium listing that I believe is expensive enough for us. So yeah, these are all 43 bucks and we're buying these for 22 bucks. And I think you'll notice there on the ratings chart, there's not a lot of action going on. So it's probably not the fastest seller in the world, but with the kind of increased in review counts on this listing, seems like a little bit more popular of a listing. I don't think it'd be the fastest seller in the world, but you would be profitable. So I'd probably pick up, you know, especially if you're on the newer side, maybe, you know, five to 10 pairs of those. See if you could potentially start making some sales in the four XLs. They're not even on that listing. They do have the mediums at nike.com right now though. So again, we're paying about 22 bucks. I think it was like 21.50. So yeah, we're just under that profit threshold there. We could see the mediums. Mediums have no ratings though. So I would be pretty careful on something like that. And just because it is like the plain black and white, mediums are pretty popular size. I might still buy some of those and then just be the guy who makes the first reviews on that product. I'd probably buy like five pairs, see how it goes. Especially from the newer side, you don't wanna get too you know, over leveraged on stuff that doesn't actually sell that well. I'm not sure these are actually the same thing. It seems like those, based on the picture, these could be shorter. Um, I think these are a little longer. Or this guy's really tall or something like that. Hard to, hard to really know what's going on here. We can check and see if it matters real quick here. So if the profit is there, sometimes it's worth doing a little bit of extra digging. The medium shorts, 43 bucks. So these are profitable, huh? Polyester, check the check marks, that kind of stuff. The, like the band on the inside, there's really not a lot to go off of here. It says it's 100% polyester. So a lot of times I'll check and see like the fabric blends or something like that. So 100% polyester. So this could also be the same listing. A lot of times you'll find that the same product is listed in multiple places on Amazon. Sell on all of them, especially if they're profitable, then bang, you, you, you figured out a way to make way more money with the same product, right? So I may actually may want to test this one out as well, especially dry fit, flex woven. I think it lines up with everything we read over here, woven, training shorts, dry fit. But yeah. And the better thing I noticed about this listing is that the ratings are actually gaining pretty fast. So we've got three new ratings in the last like month or so. I would probably pick up anywhere from like 10 to 20 pairs of these. I mean, that'd be like a nice test. You'd probably sell through those pretty quickly if I had to guess. But again, it's kind of hard to tell on a newer listing like this when there's not a lot of review action, but you can see how low the competition is. So you would only be competing with a couple sellers on this listing here. So this one could be interesting. But yeah, guys, that's kind of manual sourcing. Now, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds. We are finding some decent stuff though. But really the brief rundown here is Go to a website, you know, it doesn't have to be clothing, anything that's got any website that's running a good sale, and then just start popping open listings. Go ahead and use the seller app extension so you can be much faster than the competition. And then, yeah, it's just gonna immediately start finding those listings for you. So you don't have to, you know, copy and paste the title, throw it into Amazon, try to find it. And a lot of things that you'll notice as you really start digging through here is that some of these listings are not gonna be on Amazon. Some of them are not gonna be popular enough. And so if you're using the one-click integration there to find it all on the same page, you can save yourself the effort of clicking to Amazon and, and being disappointed when the listing doesn't exist or the product doesn't sell super well. It saves you a ton of time to use that seller sourcing method there. So, so let's go ahead and jump into this last sourcing method that I wanna go ahead and break down for you guys. So the last sourcing method that I wanna go ahead and talk about here is using softwares like Tactical Arbitrage. This is something I used to do a ton of. We still use it a little bit, but let's go ahead and jump into the sourcing method here. Basically what we can do is plug in almost any website. So I'm just gonna use Walmart for an example to show you how it works. So I plug in Walmart and then let's say I wanna look through the entire beauty category. I go ahead and click it. I click add to bulk. And now what that's going to do is pull in every beauty item at walmart.com. And then using some filters down here, there's a quite a bit of filtering here. I have full tactical arbitrage tutorials on my channel. If this is something you're interested in, I don't want to turn this into a full filter breakdown, but basically you're filtering down these products to search Walmart for products that would be sellable on Amazon. And this sounds really awesome in theory, right? Because all we have to do is go ahead and just press search, click a button, and then it's going to search through all of those products for us without having to do any work. I've actually run a few scans on this already just so we have some data populated but I also want to show you maybe a better way that you can use this software as well if you do want to go this route so what I like to do is go to a website like Michaels or IRB, really any website that is running a sale. And for one, I noticed like this right here, there's a buy one, get one 50% off sale on all this craft material here. There's 670 results. So it'd be quite a bit to look through manually. If you want to use software to do it, you can go ahead and grab the link. I'm gonna go grab Michaels here. And then, so I, I could just copy that link from michaels.com. Then I paste it as my category. So instead of like with the Walmart, we just clicked beauty and added it all. It can also read the links and then read the products underneath those links. And what we can 
really do here to make it kind of a step further. And the reason why I want to look at this particular, you know, these, this quick cut material, whatever, you know, whatever this brand is here is it's a brand that sells pretty well on Amazon. And there's a buy one, get one 50% off sale, which if you average it out, works out to about 25% off per unit. And so when we plug in 25% there, and now we press search, that's going to run all of those items at a 25% discount instead of pulling the full price. So it's going to compare that price against Amazon, know that we have a discount, and then also go ahead and factor that in. So we could also do the same thing with that iHerb search. So over here, we had 20% off on oral care. Again, you'd, all you'd have to do is copy that up there, punch in iHerb, paste the link. And then instead over here, we're getting 20% off. And another thing you can think about is getting any kind of cash back. So notice here, we got 4% cash back from Rakuten. So we can also factor that in. So we got 20% off plus another 4% with cash back. So we can run that search as well and see if it pulls up anything. And like I said, I've gone ahead and pulled, done some searches, those exact searches beforehand, ran some Walmart, ran some Target, did a few sales. And so let's just go ahead and dive into the data here and we'll see if we can find anything. So I'm going to filter by the most recent stuff here. And when I do that, I can see a lot of different information about the items here. By the way, if your tactical arbitrage looks different than this, you go to manage columns and then you can drag it around however you want. I would highly recommend that you lay it out something similar to this so that you can see the title, the product chart, so you can see the price over time and the images, all that's going to help you. So like this example is perfect. You see that's a two pack. It didn't see that it's a two pack. And so it's really going to think that our costs are half of what they are. So that's a great example of why you might want to turn on pictures and, and extra data like that. Another thing that I like about the software is it's going to note when these items are being sold by third party sellers, especially on walmart.com. I don't typically like to buy from them. So as we scroll down here, this is where it really starts to get interesting for me because it's not sold by a third party seller. Sometimes you can find third party sellers that are legit, but just for the sake of this video for speed, I'm going to go ahead and skip them. And right here, we can see that this item is being sold at Target for $10. And then over on Amazon, that same item is going for about $25 right now. But really, this isn't the best item in the world because you can see that Amazon typically sells this product. If you zoom out to the whole year, you can see that Amazon is almost always on this product. And for whatever reason, they just kind of stopped selling this product. You can also see that the new seller count is rapidly jumping up here. So even though this product is only $10 right now, we're making five bucks profit. That price is probably going to go down as you see the number of new sellers ticking up there. And that's something you'll notice with a lot of these software leads is that if they're easier to find, if you can just plug it into a software, it's going to be a little bit easier to find, right? So I like to be a little bit stricter with my products that I am finding on software. So you could, you know, buy this product, try it out. Really, you'd probably only make profit if you bought it and then shipped it direct to the customer as a merchant affiliate order. And otherwise, the price is probably going to go down by the time you get it in. But let's go ahead and keep going down the list here and see if we can find something interesting. So we got a two pack shipping. Looks like this is available for shipping. We got it for 16 bucks over here on Amazon. The same item pack of two sweet. Yeah. So the same item is 16 bucks or in over on Amazon. It's uh, it's about 30. So this one is this one's a little bit more interesting, right? Because there's not a crazy jump in new sellers. The ROI is a little bit lower than I like to look for. But since this is like a medicine, I really don't think it'd get returned or anything like that. You could think about buying a product like this. The only reason that I don't love it is it sells a little bit slow for an ROI that low. Typically, if I'm going to go in like the 30 sales per month range, I have no problem buying items that sell that slow, but I'm going to look for a little bit higher of an ROI, like, you know, 40%, 45. So it's not the worst product in the world. You could buy that. You'd probably make a little bit of money, but it's not really a, a guarantee, right? So let's see if we can find maybe a guarantee type profit. So I also scan some Marshall stuff, really just anywhere that there's discounted products, always just on the lookout for really whatever we can find. So mid height, black brindle, we need to make sure it's the same thing first, black gray, really just looking at like the tabs and stuff like that. So you can look at the back of the shoe, maybe. So it's got maybe most of the same detail it seems like yeah, it's it's kind of hard to tell if it's the exact same thing but i think it'd take a pretty picky customer for them to return this based on the tabs look the same the colors all look the same so we are buying these for 80 bucks and then over here this product's selling for 155 right now which would be really awesome if this product is selling so let's go ahead and check and see if it actually is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the asin from seller amp super quick if you just click the copy button there and then i'm going to throw it into keepa down here and when we check this we can see that it is actually gaining ratings so that's a good way to infer whether or not a product might be selling or not you know on the flip side of something down here, like zero ratings, probably not selling as fast as that product that we just found there. So this actually probably is selling. We've got a decent ROI, 53% ROI. Another thing I want to see and see how consistent that sales price is. So as I look into the past here, I see a lot of these shoes selling for like 145. So I want to make sure I'm still profitable at 145. Yeah, 140. Let's see, like even 135. I saw a little bit. So even if it goes all the way back down to like 135, which is, you know, down here, like at, at the very bottoms of these, the buy box down here, we're still making 30 
33% ROI. So I honestly might pick up, you know, five or 10 pairs of that shoe right there. And that's not too bad of a lead, but let me just go ahead and, and skim through here. Talk out my thought process a little bit. Maybe see if we can find one more winner. So I'm going to skip this product because Amazon used to be on it and now they're not all of a sudden. So that's another reason why I like having this chart here is you can skip past products really quickly. Again, this is kind of a similar case, right? This product usually isn't that expensive. Usually it's a lot less. Now it's $27. So I might skip something like that. Let's see. Walmart has got that set for 15 bucks. Could be selling on Amazon for 38. So let's go ahead and check out that one. Looks like it's out of stock. So, you know, you could monitor that listing, add it to a list. Something I like to do with the seller app Google Sheets feature is you can literally just go over here, click your Google Sheets button, and it'll send all the information you want about that product to a different Google Sheet. So it's a good idea to have like a Google Sheet going where you just click the button, it sends all the information about it, and then you can go back and check after the fact, you know, every week, every month, however often you want to check and see if that product is profitable again yet. Let's see this Rimmel. The purple, by the way, is indicating that it knows it's a multi-pack, so it knows that it's a two-pack, so it's kind of multiplying that price. It looks like it used to be in stock for two bucks. It's out of stock now. I and mean, that's another thing you'll notice using some of these softwares as well. Let's go ahead and check out just a couple more here. So seven bucks, out of stock. And that one was probably profitable as well. So like all these products here, you could add, you know, click your Google Sheet button, check it, see if it's back in stock, and you can really make some money on that. So 22 bucks. It seems like a different style. Was that style in stock on here? It's maybe like a style mismatch of some kind. Simple water. And we're buying this for 10 bucks. If it's in stock, obviously. So it was in stock, but now it's not. It was in stock for 10 bucks. Was selling for, it sounds like 22 bucks. There's also a new seller increase on, on a listing like this. So let's go ahead and call it there on the tactical arbitrage portion. So now that we've broken down the three different ways that you can source products to sell on Amazon, I wanna go ahead and talk about the best one for you, right? So the first one you did, reverse sourcing, is by far the best way to source if you are a new Amazon seller. And the reason for that is because the other two methods require brand knowledge or website knowledge, right? So if you're brand new to the space, you need to understand what brands sell well, where can I find those brands on sale, and where are some smaller websites that other people might not think about. Reverse sourcing is going to take you to those places, right? And so after you've mastered reverse sourcing, most people will just do reverse sourcing up to 10, 20, even $30,000 a month in sales. And then they'll start implementing a little bit of manual sourcing. And so now that you've reverse sourced, you've done it for a few months, you know, you've learned the ropes, you now you can skip straight to the sales that you've been finding by doing reverse sourcing, right? And even as you start reverse sourcing, you're going to end up doing manual sourcing just by accident almost, right? Because you're going to find a sale, you're going to find related items, so you're going to be able to dive into it from there. And then the last method that we covered, software sourcing, is something that you should probably implement later on in your business. It used to be something that was a little bit more effective, but as more and more people are using softwares like that, it's super important to dig deeper than just surface level, right? So all the best products that are going to be found on Amazon are going to have the title wrong or have the UPC wrong or just something like that that makes the item harder to find. And because it's harder to find, it stays you know more profitable. There's less sellers that find it. And if a software can see your product, it's probably not going to stay profitable as long as one that cannot be seen by a software. And I don't say that to say that using softwares like TA is useless now. You just have to be a little bit more creative with those softwares. And so as you become more and more seasoned as an Amazon seller, you'll start to understand ways that you can be creative, You know, plugging in multiple layers of discount, plugging in lists of products that might be good. There's lots of different ways you can use that software effectively, but it's not going to be the best way for you to start as a new seller. So I really hope you found a ton of value in this video. Hopefully you can use it to go find your first five, ten thousand dollars worth of products to sell on Amazon. If you guys wouldn't mind sharing some of that value back with my business by hitting the subscribe button, I would really appreciate that kind of putting you on some free game here. If you guys do want to go ahead and check out trials of any of the tools that we use today as well, you can go ahead and go through my links as a thank you for teaching you how to use them. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down below as well. Always super happy to answer those for you guys. But I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I will see you next time.